Today's episode is a recap of Mexicano Universal 2022. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like content like this, please consider subscribing as we near that 100,000 subscriber mark. I need all of your support to get there. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you'll know when new episodes are released. Every once in a while in pageantry, something happens that we don't want to see. If you have already watched the show, then you probably know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't, then stick around till the end because of course we're going to talk about something that happened during this show, unfortunately. Before we get into that though, I want to say overall a great show. They had a wonderful production, lighting, sound, staging, all of that was beautiful. I was a little bit surprised that we didn't see performers and I did think that we had a lot of offstage or kind of backstage-ish commentary during the show and I would much rather have seen more of the contestants on stage. So that would be an adjustment I'd like to see made for years to come, but still awesome show. We also have to mention that Jimena, Miss Universe 2010 and Andrea, Miss Universe 2020 hosted the show. Well, they were some of the hosts. There were a few hosts going on there and I was so excited to see them. I'm a really big fan of whenever they bring back former title holders or contestants to be a part of the show's production. I think it's wonderful. I think it's a wonderful way to support former title holders in their continued success to continually put them out there in front of a bigger audience. I think that it's just so great. And it's nice to catch up with them as well and see what they've been up to. They both did a phenomenal job. They looked just as gorgeous as ever. So very, very well done to our former Miss Universes that by the way, represented Mexico, of course, at Miss Universe. At this year's competition, they had their opening number and then they narrowed it down to a top 15 and the top 15 competed in swim and gown. So I have a couple of notes for the swimsuit competition that I wanna share, a couple of contestants that really stuck out to me and some that I thought were gonna be moving on that maybe didn't and then some that I think have great potential for the future. By the way, can contestants recompete at this national pageant? I cannot remember. First is Aguas Calientes, and I really, really liked her facial expression change after her turn. I thought that was so well done. It must have been very well rehearsed, and it was something that I noticed. Cuidad de Mexico is somebody that I see such great potential in. I feel like there's room for growth with her walk. I wanted to see just a little bit more posture as she's walking across stage, but I really, really like her. I think she's so beautiful and I'd love to see her come back if that's possible or still see her compete in another national pageant in Mexico. Colima, she just had a solid performance for me. My note for her was good job. So that's the type of contestant when I see them compete, I'm like, ugh, no doubt about it. Let's give her a great score. Let's get her moving on to that next round. Estados Unidos was a contestant that interestingly enough, when I was reviewing the contestants prior to finals and I was watching things like the gala night, for example, I saw her and she was always hovering on my edge of favorites. And so it's really interesting because when I was watching the final, I loved her. I absolutely loved her. Also love her hair color. I feel like her hair is like what I'm trying to go for, that shade. It's hard, it's hard to achieve, okay, when you're not a natural blonde. But I really liked her and I thought she had that potential to get into a top five. Now, unfortunately, we didn't see her advance to that top five, but it just kind of makes me go back and think like, hmm, that initial assessment then was true for me because I hadn't put her in my top, top picks prior to the finals. If you're watching this episode because you are a pageant contestant and you want to learn how to improve your overall online presence, then check out the description below where you can learn a lot more about Content Queen. Guanajuato, great performance. I like her little wink at the end. She was just solid. Honestly, I feel like with that performance, I could see her competing even at Miss International. I felt like that could have been another title that would have worked out well for her. Jalisco, that eyebrow, that little move at the end. I just thought that she could have potentially moved on. She was definitely somebody that was standing out to me during swim. Nayari did this little slow walk and it reminded me of what some of the contestants do at Miss Grand International. And so it was still a good performance, but it was giving me grand vibes. By the way, they do not award a grand title at this pageant, just in case you're wondering. So I'm mentioning it, but I know that none of these contestants, at least at this competition, are moving on to grand. 
Nuevo Leon had great eye contact with the camera. That is a skill within itself that's not easy to master because there's not really a way of practicing that at home. Not much you can do. So some contestants just seem to have a knack for that and she does. I really, really liked this performance. For me, this was easily in my top five performances for swim. Sonora's swim walk for me came out very, very fast, especially at the beginning of it. But then at the end, I felt like she really redeemed herself with some great facials. So when I saw the ending, and that's kind of what matters, it's like you want to finish really strong in these competitions. For me, she was in a top two at that point for swim. I really liked it. I have to mention Tamaulipas because she is so gorgeous on stage and I really want to see her continue to grow and progress and gain more confidence. And one thing that I noticed about her is that the eye contact could be improved. I really want to see that dedicated eye contact with the judges at least or with the camera. Next, let's move on to gown. So everybody got to compete in gown. First, let's say we had a pretty strong opening with Aguas Calientes. She wore this beautiful silver broken mirrored gown. I thought that the performance was solid. It was kind of middle of the road for me though. When I saw it, I, was, I had this feeling of like, okay, that was good. I wanna see what else is coming. And so it's hard, it's hard starting at the beginning and opening a show to come out really, really strong because I feel like there's always that that desire from a judge to go, okay, but what else is there, right? We always want to see something bigger and better and fresh and interesting. So it's tough to start the show. Cuidad de Mexico. I have to talk about her because she's so beautiful, like I said, and she has a soft spot in my heart. I really like her. And I think that this gown was eating her a little bit. It was a lot on her small frame. Maybe it needed to be altered a little bit more, but I think maybe less sleeves, also smaller earrings would have been really great on her. So I would have brought down some of that styling. Colima's performance was cut off in the version that I saw, so I didn't get the best impression of it, but from what I did see, I thought it was going really well. Love the gown, love the fringe off the shoulder, that it was perfectly fitted to her. Estados Unidos was still one of my favorites. I thought that her gown choice was perfectly fitted to her body. I loved that. I will say though, she switched her part in her hair and I actually preferred the middle part look on her. Guanajuato did an outstanding job for evening gown. She looked beautiful in purple on stage and it actually matched the staging, which was kind of nice. She had a, a nice little turn where she worked that sash that she had. But I will say, surprisingly, I preferred her green gala gown. If you watch the channel, you know I'm not a huge fan of green gowns. I just don't feel like they translate that well on stage. But on her, that emerald color really, really stood out and I actually would have preferred it because I also liked the silhouette of the green gown more on her. But she still had a very strong performance, definitely one that I would have given her a great score for and she would have been moving on to my personal top five. The first Jalisco for me was so beautiful. She had really, really unique earrings. The gown was gold with a little bit of green kind of woven into it with the stoning and that was really nice. For me, she was on the edge of my top five for that performance. I thought that she did so well. I would not have been surprised to see her in a top five after this gown performance. Then we have our other Jalisco and I felt that the gown turn wasn't as smooth as it should have been. So I was like, ooh, that, that's so tough when what you've practiced doesn't quite get executed as well during a live show. But I will say after that, her gaze on stage really would have brought the points back up for me. I still think that she had a strong ending for that. Nayarit, I have to just commend you and your team. The gown was so perfectly fitted. I don't know who designed this piece or who fitted it, but it was perfection on her. And so just claps for just that look, okay? But she had phenomenal eye contact for this, so I can see why she moved on to the top five. Nuevo Leon once again nailed the camera look. She really had fantastic eye contact with the camera. And of course I loved that, but I will say that her gown was my favorite of the group. I thought it was so beautiful and it was so elegant. We did see a lot of just fully rhinestoned gowns that seemed to be the trend this year at this pageant, which of course it's in many pageants at this level. And I think that that's great but the white really stood out on her. And I really appreciated just the cutouts that were filled in with flat back stones. I liked the avant-garde oversized, almost like a bow in the back. It was just lovely. 
it was beautiful it was unique especially out of the group and at that point i definitely had her in my top five so Nardo's gown, beautiful on her. I just wrote a quick note for myself, gold gown, because I loved it. The fit of it was perfect and it complemented her figure. She is extremely fit as well. I should mention that. And it, it just looked great. I thought that this was a top five performance. Once again, I'm just gonna talk about Damalipas really quick because I think she is so stunning and I see such potential in her. And I just felt like I liked the makeup, the hair, I thought that was great, but I thought that the gown itself, the styling of it with that peplum on the side, it's its almost like a peplum that was on the side of it and the one shoulder and the sleeve and all, all of that. And I think there was pearls woven into the fabric. I'm not positive whether it was pearls in sequence or beading or a mixture, but I did think that overall look of the gown it reminded me more of something we would see for a mother of the bride so i think the gown itself was aging her i wanted to see something a bit younger on her but she's so stunning i want to see her compete somewhere else now let's talk about the top five this is right before things get very interesting and i have to say thank you to karen my good friend on Instagram over here, who was kind enough to send me the translated questions and answers. What? Thank you, thank you. Not just for me, but honestly for everybody watching this. By the way, I believe these questions were sent in by fans and we're gonna start with Kolima. What do you think about people who are against pageantry? What would you say to these people to give pageantry the opportunity so people can learn about it or get to know it better to change their opinion essentially this is a little rough translation and she said from my perspective i can tell you that i have reinvented myself here with 31 other women who have changed completely mexicana universal empowers us and i can tell you that the 31 contestants that are here that they return home as an inspiration and empowerment and that creates a domino effect to make more women empowered and causes them to identify with us. Okay, all I could tell is that she sounded eloquent and that she delivered her answer with confidence. So that was what I was taking away, but this, well done. Next question goes to Guanajuato and she was asked, there's an increasing percentage of people of all ages who suffer from one or more mental disorders such as anxiety, depression, and others. As a national queen, what actions would you take to promote mental health? This was a little bit rough, I would say, because she paused for a moment. I think that the nerves got the best of her, but I'm gonna do my best to share her answer. So she said, good night. In short, or good evening. In short, mental health is a key pillar for well-being for us humans, and I would like to promote it, and it is clear to me that the key is prevention. And then she said, sorry, sorry, that's where she paused and said, sorry, sorry, I, I got it. She says, for me, the key is prevention and prevention comes from education. So I need to encourage our girls to educate themselves in emotional intelligence materials so that they can work on themselves, especially on their self-esteem. If we don't change our inner world, we can't change the outside world. And then she said in sign language, above all, remind them that magic begins when we believe in you. Now we have Nuevo Leon. She was asked, every day in Mexico, violence against women increases. If you were the representative of the country or a leader as the president or the governor, what actions would you take to control this problem and reduce the levels of violence? She said, good evening, San Luis Potosi, and thank you for your question. Without a doubt, the issue of violence against women is very sensitive and a delicate issue that we all have to take on as more important. As president of this country, first of all, I would create a support network for those victims of violence and abuse where women are never doubted. And later I would create a network of public ministries like the police office in the US, more humane, sensitive, and aware of the damage that exists in Mexico. Then she also said, I would also create a program together with the Secretary of Education where values such as respect, solidarity, and education on mental health are promoted. Remember that if we wanna create change, we have to start with ourselves the women and then she encouraged women to raise their voice because together we are invincible. I will say I was very impressed by the delivery of her answer. It stood out to me out of the entire top five. I loved that. She commanded the audience. 
Sonora was asked, how would you apply your profession to the conservation of the environment? She said, well, good evening to everyone. I believe that the conservation of the environment should not have, should not be divided into professions. As a television host and business administrator, I would use that platform to be able to inspire and motivate people to create awareness that we must motivate the only home that we have, and that's the earth. Or I think it's a rough translation that we must, I would say that we must preserve or conserve the only home that we have. She said, let's promote education from home, values, respect, love, solidarity, and empathy so that together we can combat this situation, this problem that is strong that we are experiencing together we can create a better world she also presented her answer in a very confident way and didn't stumble through anything so well done nayari was asked when there's anonymity in social networks it gives a person the freedom to make a comment against somebody else without thinking of the consequences that it brings to mental health what message would you give to those who feel free to make comments that attack others hmm. Her answer was, to those who feel they have the right and the power to comment on the lives of others and make negative comments, I would tell them to apply more empathy. Definitely consider that all human beings are living and fighting their own battles and those kind of comments that are offensive can cause a tragedy in people. And if you let me, I will give you a message to those people who are suffering this kind of violence. Remember first that your strength will always be self-love. Never doubt yourself and remember all the obstacles that you have already been through and where you are now. Very, very good. So we had a lot of great content here, great answers. I personally loved it. But then we got to the announcement of our titles. And at this pageant, they award four crowns out of the five contestants. I don't love that format. I don't like leaving one person out. I prefer at Bini Bini Filipinas where they award the titles, but they have a, at least a first and a second runner up out of that group. And so I much just prefer that format, but Let's talk about what happened. These contestants go on to represent Mexico in different international pageants, some of which I'm not very familiar with. And if you're familiar with them, please share below what you know about them. So here were the results. Guanajuato is going to represent Mexico at Reina Hispano America at that pageant. Then we have Nayarit and she will represent Mexico at Latino Americana. Next. Ugh, and here's and here's where things really went downhill. Next, they announced the Miss International title. They awarded that title initially to Nueva Leon. And when I saw that, I thought, okay, I could see her going to Miss International, but she would have been, at this point, I really loved her. She would have been my pick for Miss Universe. Now we come down to our top two. I'm just gonna table that information for a moment. Our top two at this point are Sonora, and Colima. We think that they're gonna announce that. Then it cuts to the farewell for Deborah. And then we come back to the show and they say, excuse us, we need to make a correction. Colima is gonna represent Mexico at Miss International. So of course everybody's confused. I was confused. Nuevo Leon walks back on and then she crowns Colima as Miss Mexico International. So she puts the crown on her. Now the top two are Sonora and Nuevo León, and they're holding hands, they're ready to go. I don't even know what either of them would have been thinking at this moment. I was very confused. I was, I don't know, I kind of thought that if they were sending Nuevo León back to a top two, like with Pia, for example, that that would mean that she won. That's what I was thinking was about to happen. It wasn't. So then they announced Nuevo León as first runner up and then Sonora as the winner. Congratulations to her, tough competition. I think she was very deserving. I think that she did a great job. Personally, like I said though, we all have our preferences and I, if I were judging, I would have scored Nuevo Leon a little bit higher, maybe resulting in a very different placement. What blows my mind is that initially she was given a crown and she went from having a title and you know, maybe she wanted to go to Miss Universe and maybe she was thinking, okay, Miss Universe was my first choice as it is for many contestants, but international is great too, which it is. So maybe she was thinking that. And so she went from that though, from like, oh, okay, going to international to no title at all, no title, first runner up. 
Some people have said that being first runner up is still important. So I'm thinking that maybe that means that she'll still be preparing just in case any of the title holders don't make it to their international competition, which does happen. So I assume that that's something that'll be going on. But I just felt so bad for her. I really could not believe, especially with how she presented her answer and not even just the final answer, but her overall presentation. I just cannot believe that she did not get any title. And I've seen a lot of pageants and I've seen interesting results, results where I, I think, oh, you know, I don't exactly agree, but I can see how that would happen. This result though, is one of the most confusing that I've ever seen. Is she potentially first runner up because she can come back and recompete like a Pia situation too? Poor Pia, like Pia in the Philippines where she was a runner up and then she was able to come back. Is that what's going on? It's almost like when they save a contestant for a later year, a later edition. I just am so confused because I genuinely feel like her overall performance deserved some crown, some crown. What is it? What happened? What happened? Just let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Let's keep it really kind though, because I bet that many of you were just as surprised as I am. So still though, congratulations to all the new title holders. I was just really, really surprised because I thought that Nuevo Leon did such a great job that she deserved that type of recognition. Recognition. So thank you though for watching this really interesting episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you think that Mexico will be winning the Miss Universe 2022 title below. And if you have any episode requests, you can let me know as well. Thank you for tuning into this episode. And if you wanna catch up on the other episodes that I created for Mexicana Universal, then you can check those out right here, or you can check out any of my other Miss Universe national pageant recaps, predictions, and episodes. Thanks so much for joining me for this one though, and I hope to see you next time.